welcome to Soul Symbols. My name is Shelly. I'm a writer, an astrologer, and a card reader, and I'd like to welcome you to my channel. Happy Saturday. It is the weekly energy card reading, and what that is is you, the viewer, get to choose from one of three tarot or oracle decks, and we'll go through and do a quick spread to see what the uh, general energies will be like for the next seven days. It does not need to be the week of February 6th through the 13th <laughs> in order for the messages to resonate. Um, if you come across this video at any time, if you're drawn to it, there could be some messages contained. Um, I like to think of card reading like dream interpretation, and there's a saying in card reading, we always say take what resonates and leave the rest. So if you feel like messages are not resonating, um, by all means, don't don't take any information that you th feel like is not, you know, vibing with you. Um, you can always pick another deck or possibly pick another video. It could be a different week. Um, but it's it's definitely all in entertainment purposes, and it's, um, it's not meant to upset anybody or, you know, it's... it's energies are not chiseled in stone so it, it always shifts from minute to minute so don't don't take it too personally and then um, I will be clarifying I was clarified with the Oracle cards um, and we will be doing that again to uh, this week so I did just want to touch back real quick before we get started um, also if you ever want to jump straight to your reading all the timestamps are in the description box as are the names and the authors of the decks that I use so if you ever want to check that out it's all down below now, the one thing I wanted to touch on, and speaking of uh, taking messages that resonate and messages that don't, um, last week's uh, weekly energy card reading, the second deck had a really eventful week. And what, what struck me is that um, I also, after I film a video, um, I upload it and I usually wait a few days after it's posted and then I go back to the video, you know, kind of like, almost like cleansing a palate, you know, <laughs> you know how when you eat ginger before you eat different types of sushi or, you know, when you smell coffee beans before you smell different perfumes. I kind of give it a day or so and then I go back and I pick a deck with you. So um, I, I do, I visit my own videos and I say, okay, what's my week gonna be like? And it's funny, the number two is usually my kind of lucky number uh, just because I'm Libra and I've got two scales and you know, um, a lot of the planets in my own chart are kind of equal. So the number two really means a lot to me. Um, of course, I go with my gut instinct. It's not always that deck, but um, so last week, deck number two had a really kind of wild week. Like we had we had the Ten of Swords, we had the Devil, we had um, you know the King of Pentacles in the reverse. And um, what I wanted, what really made me think is I and I did I picked that same deck. So if you picked deck number two last week, you I picked the same deck. I was drawn to it several times. Um, but one thing I wanted to, you know, now that the, the week, what I like to do is I like to wait until the week is over and then look back to see how the, how the cards match up because I'm learning too, you know, even though I've read cards for a long time, you know, I, I always learn as I go. And of course it's a weekly energy reading, right? So sometimes when you get big cards like the emperor or the king of pentacles, you're trying to interpret it the best way that you can. And it was interesting. Um, it never fails. It's after I, I after I've lived through the week and I go back and compare it to the card reading. Um, there there was a few things that were close, like a close match. But um, the energy of that week was really more like you know you you sneaking in the beginning of the week. Someone was sneaking away from something. Middle of the week, it seemed like someone was doing a power play with money. And then by the end of the week, it was like it, it almost looked kind of legal. It looked like you know the the justice card came up in the reverse and it was interesting my week was kind of like that um, beginning of the week I felt like um, I kind of felt like I wasn't able to voice what I really thought like I was afraid of getting in trouble if I, if I said what I really thought which is kind of like the seven of swords um, middle of the week it was interesting I was feeling a little bit um, it was it was right before pay period so I was kind of feeling like the king of Pentacles in reverse and what was what was great is that the the page of cups turned out to be um, someone listening to me um, also at me listening to someone else um, so that that you know someone being an emotional you know someone um, someone innocent lending you an ear you know we talked about it being emotionally open and then what was interesting is today it's you know technically the end of the week now um, the end of the week we saw a justice in reverse and it's funny I made a today I made a judgment call today and like I said I'm Libra um, and I'm not always right I usually I'm usually pretty balanced when I make a decision it's usually for the right reasons 
Um, but today I did. I caught myself being a little bit emperor. Like I was like, no, we're going to do this. This is my decision. Don't question me. I was. I was being kind of like, well, this is my kingdom. It is. I was kind of being like my way or the highway. And um, I did. I, and it's interesting. I had someone kind of call me and say, okay, are you sure you're being completely fair? Are you sure you're giving someone the benefit of the doubt here? And it's funny. I... I think, you know, I stand by my decision, but it was interesting how, um, you know, I was very much like, okay, we're going to do it this way. It's this way or no way. And, um, and I did have someone say, okay, are you sure that's fair? And that's how it, that's how it looks. So, um, long story short, you know, when I do these reads, I, I don't, I don't like to be a shocker, right? I don't like to be, and, and definitely you see a lot of readings that'll talk about scary things. You see the tower and you're like, oh, you're going to, you're going to get struck by lightning or you're going to have a catastrophe happen. I don't like being, I don't like those type of reads because I don't, you know, ca card reading is not about that. You know, it's about, and, and again, you know, when you're reading weekly energies, it can be small little things, right? It's not going to be, you know, meteors hitting the earth, <laughs> you know, on, on your Wednesday off. Um, so I, that was just a very humbling experience because, um, you know, while, while the read, I, I, and again, I stand by the read from last week, uh, what I read was correct. It could have resonated for someone that could have really been someone's week. But, um, for a lot of us, for a lot of us, other people, it might have been, you know, more like the week I had, which was the same energies, but a lot, you know, just in a more general and a more everyday sense. So I just wanted to share that with you because it really weighs on my mind. And um, and I always like to learn and grow. I always want to get better at what I do. So, um, but thank you for listening to my spiel. Again, if you want to jump straight to the reading, the timestamp, click the timestamp. That's your fast pass. <laughs> and so I'm just bearing that in mind as I do our read this week. We're going to keep it real simple. We're going to look at it and what it really means for you. And um, and if I shocked anybody with last week's read, I did not mean to. And I, I, I do try to mind that, you know, again, just because you see some scary, you know, there are no bad cards in tarot. But um, this week, I am going to pull out some decks we have not seen in a while. I always say that. I like to keep it in rotation. If we haven't seen it in three weeks, it's coming back out. And um, so we got three decks here. Uh, the first deck is my newest deck, and that is the Tarot of the Divine by um, Yoshi Yoshitami. And on top of it, we have a beautiful clear quartz. Um, the middle deck is wonderful. We have not seen it. This is the Slow Tarot. And, um, ooh, look, the hangman. But um, this is by a, uh, this deck was a Kickstarter project by um, Lacey Bryant. And I, I mention this because uh, Lacey Bryant has an Instagram and she is also on Facebook. She's a, um, a California artist. All of the cards in this deck were real paintings that she created over the course of eight years. And eight is such a Saturn number. I think Capricorn, I think it's like a, it's, it's, it's like a work of, it's a work of heart. And that's what it is. But um, what's making me think of Lacey so much is that um, we're coming up on Chinese New Year. And it is the year of the ox, of the bull. And um, and over on her Instagram, she's doing some kind of like parade. She's painting. They're doing different ox, oxen, oxi. I'm sorry if I'm screwing that up. And it's so beautiful to see. The artwork that she's producing uh, is really cool. She's part of some kind of project in California and um and it's it is it's almost like everybody's painting their own ox and there's like 12 of them over on her Instagram so please feel free to check her out I will post uh her handle in the description box you know see if you like her style it's gorgeous and on top of this deck which is her her work of art is a beautiful bloodstone the third deck is the spacious tarot and this is lovely this is all natural images um, and on top of it, we have a green fluorite. And since we kind of have a nature theme going, I mean, the first deck is fairy tales, but you know, this is a real world deck and this is an, a real nature deck. Um, I decided to pull out an Oracle deck that we haven't used in a while, which is the spirit animal Oracle by Colette Baron Reed. And um, I am going to get around to doing the animal review decks. I've been kind of backlogged in every area of my life. <laughs> Sorry, I've been, you know, no time for anything. But um, we're going to clarify using those cards. So enough blabbing. Uh, please choose from your intuition, whatever your gut tells you, that pull be behind, you know, the center of your chest, whatever you feel in your jellies. If you need more time, please pause the video, and I'll see you in a minute.
Okay, we're back. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, I hope everyone did have a good week. Yeah, even even if you had a toughy week like we thought we were gonna have, I I really saw it ending strong. So I'm I'm glad. I hope I hope everybody is well. I always wish everyone real well. And this is such a gorgeous stone. It's funny, I got this as kind of a free gift, and it doesn't this look like so pretty on top of this deck? It's a clear quartz, it's like a point. And the bottom of it is raw, and the, the top of it is more polished. It's really sorry, the lighting doesn't do it much justice. I need a New Year's resolution, y'all. I'm going to try to work on my lighting. Maybe I'll get one of those circle lights that make us all look like, you know, fashion models. <laughs> well, you don't see my face, so you know, make the cards look like fashion models. All right, enough blabbing. Uh, deck number one, the, the Tarot of the Divine. What kind of week are we going to have? What kind of regular, normal week? Okay, middle of the week, please. and take all three here. I have cups. Okay. Okay, please clarify that. Thank you. Okay, this is kind of bridging a little bit. Get an emperor. This is such a cool emperor in this deck. It's uh, King Arthur. I just think that's so awesomeness. Okay, and let's go ahead. our guidance or energy. Okay, that's popping out. Oh, cool, guys. Cool. Okay, I'm going to take this one, too. I kind of cut the deck, and it was speaking to me. So let's... I, I like to be fair with all three decks. So if we got two oracle cards with the first read, we're going to do two oracle cards for all reads. Okay, sound cool? All right. Libra fairness. Libra represent. All right, guys, so let me see if you can see this okay. This this deck is beautiful. It has kind of a glossy, it has kind of a satin texture, so I hope there's not too much glare there. No glare there. Okay, now this is really interesting, guys, is that um, beginning of the week, we got the Four of Swords. And what's interesting is when I first got this deck, I was almost taken a little aback by the way the imagery in the card, but when you actually read the book, it's really quite interesting. Um, this is, um, this d dog is really a wolf and it's, his name is Finn Rear. Um, it's, it's, um, he's actually kind of a werewolf and it's interesting if you, if you watch the old film noir movies, they actually have something called Finn Rear. It's the actual, I think Latin root of it kind of means werewolf or, or controlled by the moon. And in this fairy tale, this wolf is not just a regular werewolf that wreaks havoc, um, but it's, um, well, he does kind of wreak havoc in this too. He's almost like one of the four harbingers of the end of the world. And, and please don't freak out. I'm not, I'm not, just like I said in the intro, I'm not reading this in some kind of catastrophic way, I promise you. But what I get from this is that the reason I look at this is because it's, it's not a traditional four of swords kind of energy. When you look at the traditional Rider Waite Smith, you see four of swords as a guy laying on a concrete slab. And it's about repose, right? The, the traditional meaning is about pulling back and, and resting, you know, um, getting away from the fray. Like, um, it, it isn't, I always say the four swords is your problems are not going away. Your problems will be there when you get back, but it's you taking a necessary reprieve from them. It's like, it's, it's almost like one of those situations where it does no good to continue, um, fighting or trying to push or trying to get anywhere mentally. It's almost like you need, you need to go to your corner and take a breather before you get back to, you know, fighting the good fight. And in this deck, what it is, is that this dog is one of the, is one of the bringers of the end of the world. And what they have is, and I know it looks kind of like a scary card, but they have the wolf tied up, right? And, you know, they have, you know, the, and what really strikes me, what's really drawing me to this card right now is that, that knife through the mouth, which does look gory. I know, believe me, I was taken a little aback when I first saw that, but what I'm kind of seeing here is, you know, the vibe I'm getting? I'm getting the vibe that there's something going on. Um, now, first off, okay, the vibe that I'm getting from this is that you really want to. In the beginning of the week, there's some kind of, I'm going to move the microphone. I hope that doesn't make a booming sound. There we go. 
um, there's there's something going on around you. There's some kind of activity, and I feel like it's real, it's real verbal. Um, if it's a work or family thing, um, I feel like decisions or things are going on around you that um, that you want to be a part of or that you want to have some kind of participation in. Um, but you're you're tied up and not you're it's almost like you're not able to join the it's it's like you're not able to voice your opinion or give your input about it and it's it's a it's 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 angering you like you you're really kind of frenzied about it it's like you see how his his he's his mouth is forcefully closed and his and his eye is kind of wild like like if if i if i just pulled this sword out and untied myself oh my god you'd be in for it right you'd be in for it um so what i'm kind of getting is that i'm i'm getting a sense that it's really hard for you to pull back because you want to put your in, input into something but you 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 can't for some reason now the other thing that i get is that right now we are in the midst of a mercury retrograde and the Mercury retrograde is in an air sign. It's in a, it's in Aquarius at the late degrees, at the late degrees. So I'll just tell you right now, if you have any planets that are in the late degrees of Taurus, like anything from 20 degrees to 29 degrees Taurus, or Leo, 20 degrees, 29 degrees Leo, um, or um, what's the last one? Scorpio. Oh, Scorps are going to feel it. Scorps are going to feel this. The other thing that I kind of get is with this honestly being that kind of spooky kind of, he is a little bit like a werewolf. He kind of reminds me of those film noir movie monsters. I am can kind of getting a vibe that you might have a Scorpio presence in your chart. And it can be more than just your son. Actually, this kind of irritation, I'd check your mouth. Uh, check your mouth. Like, um, I'm sorry, check your Mercury. I'm sorry, didn't clarify uh, as you can see, Mercury Retrograde is affecting me too. <laughs> Actually, a lot of the readers, it was cute. I've been watching different readings and a lot of readers are kind of stumbling over their own tongue and it's like, ah, oh, Mercury Retrograde. We're all kind of groaning. But um, I will say this. Okay, astrologer hat on for just a minute. Mercury Retrograde. Can't even say it, guys. All right. <laughs> all right. Mercury Retrograde. And just like retro begins with an R-E, retrogrades are fabulous and let me tell you fabulous for doing something that has been has not been done in the past like um, maybe you had some kind of weird computer glitch that you were never able to iron out try it now if you've been missing something like if you lost a ring or if you lost your phone book or you lost some miscellaneous thing look for it now if um tech problems definitely great time to go back you know it's funny my printer my wireless printer has not connected to my desktop computer in three in three months six months i can i can use my phone with it but i can't use the desktop computer that's been synced to it forever and i work in tech let me promise you i've done everything i've reinstalled the drivers i've done a little dance i've done a circle of salt holy water nothing is making this thing work i'm gonna try again while it's mercury retrograde because i and also with it being aquarius it's a lot of tech stuff now, the other thing that I'm kind of getting with this is that it this could be tech. If this is a work thing and you work in tech, it's quite possible because this is another thing that happens during Mercury retrogrades, and I'm not trying to call it. It never fails that people try to do these updates, and I always get scared poopless the moment someone's like, oh, you know, first day of the Mercury retrograde, we're running an update. I'm like, okay, be afraid. Be freaking afraid <laughs> because it is full of bugs it, it breaks more things than it fixes <laughs> and that's that might be it too is that maybe um, maybe you there's some kind of update that rolled out and maybe you knew it was a bad update and but you're not allowed to say anything and so you're just growling and with your eyes wide like I I you, you know what I'm getting? You're feeling stabby. <laughs> a good writer friend of mine coined that phrase where she's like, I'm feeling stabby, <laughs> you know, um, because really this wolf is the bringer of, of the end of the world. Um, I almost kind of feel like you want to bring the end of the world, but you can't because you're tied up or you're not allowed to say anything. The other thing that I kind of get from this is if this is like a home thing, I get a strong sense like there might be something that you want to change. Um, quite possibly there might be changes and not in a negative way um, because also Aquarius is about um, uh, Aquarius is about innovation and it's about 
independence, right? Um, so it could quite possibly be that maybe you have some ideas like about, you know, um, uh, moving out on your own or doing things your own way. But for right now, you can't say anything. And you're still you still got to live up to what someone else is telling you to do. So you feel tied up. Um, again, this is coming out real strong. The Four of Swords is not a time to take action. Mercury retrograde is not a time to take action. If anything, you might want to tie up some loose ends from the past so this is a good time that if if you had some kind of obligation maybe if there's something that you have to kind of address you know revisit revamp recycle anything that begins re that's the time you want to work on also you know um but i i do get the sense i am getting the sense that you're kind of chomping at the bit the other thing is i'm getting kind of a restlessness that you will there's some kind of big change that you want to implement but you're feeling really held back. And this also could be world event related. Maybe there was some kind of project that you really wanted to launch, but you can't because we're in COVID world. So that's possible too. But at the beginning of the week, it's almost like you're in a forced repose. You're not real happy about it. And I almost kind of get like, if, if you weren't all tied up, you would be making some major changes. But it's almost like, um, but I, with that knife through the mouth, I'm almost getting a, a sense like you're grinning. I'm getting grin and bear it. I'm getting grin and bear it. And I think like it's almost some kind of changes that are being done against your will. I'm getting a strong sense that you it's not things are technological things are not being done the way you would do them. <laughs> um, either that or you have to deal with uh, you're getting some kind of setback from some kind of tech thing. But um, one thing that anytime I notice that frustration, especially with tech stuff, um, try to try to, to fix old problems because I can almost promise you it's amazing. Like like with my printer not syncing, I bet you the moment I go to, to fix it, it, it'll it'll fix like this, like there was nothing wrong. And I'll be like, dang, I tried that six months ago. Why is it working now? Not then. OK, screw it. Never mind. It's working now. Right. Um, so just, you know, uh, try to try to calm it a little bit. But damn, I, I am getting kind of like a caged beast feeling here. So, um, you know, but now is your time. It's almost like telling you to rest, but uh, I am getting kind of that energy like, okay, who had, I'm getting that kind of no one has time for that. Um, the only other thing that I'm kind of getting with this is maybe you do work in tech or something like that and you're being bombarded with stupid problems from some kind of bad upgrade and you're being forced to deal with it. And this, this um, you dealing with some kind of problems from something else is preventing you from doing what you want to do. And it, it's, it's pissing you off, but you can't say anything. Um, now, middle of the week, this is really quite interesting, is that we've got, we got the Seven of Swords. We've got a lot of animals. Here we have another wolf. Um, and here the wolf is kind of sneaking away. But you see this shadow standing over him and kind of like looking kind of evil, right? Um, and then we've got the Knight of Cups and the Five of Cups. Now, these can be different events. This is another thing I'm trying to be better about is that just because I see a theme, um, I'm so used to this spread being past, present, future. But what this is is beginning of the week, middle of the week, end of the week. So this can be completely different things, right? You know, beginning of the week might be work related. Um, these are just the, the main highlight themes that are happening to you this week. Um, the middle of the week, I'm seeing I'm seeing two cups and swords. Um so wow guys you know what i'm almost you know what i'm almost sensing is that um one thing um the 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 crown of the energy is the five of cups and what i really notice is that there's there's this weird arm coming out of the sea and kind of grabbing her by the leg um and this this uh, knight of cups he has a falcon on his arm, which is very much like a swords kind of element. This is very different. Again, these are all fairy tales. Um, you know what I'm really getting? I'm getting an interesting story here, guys. In the middle of the week, um, I feel like I'm really getting a strong sense beginning of the week might be work related. If it is family related, it's it's almost like people are making plans and you're not allowed to say anything about it. You have to go along to get along. Um, middle of the week, I get a strong sense that there's someone that you kind of want to reach out to. There's a lot of cups here. 
there's someone that you want to reach out to and I feel like it's a communication and what what I'm getting here is because it's kind of the same wolf um, I get the sense like maybe you feel like you're being watched or your communications being watched and you're really missing someone here like you're really missing someone you're 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 mourning you're kind of mourning um like I, I get the sense that you really want to reach out to somebody but it's it's almost like you're standing at a distance the other thing that i get is with the falcon being there um i get the sense that there's someone that you want to talk to there's someone that you want to talk to and you want to have like a kind of a heart-centered conversation um but it's almost like you feel like you're being watched because I do still think that you're the wolf. And I feel like you have to be sneaky about it. You have to be sneaky about it. The other thing that I get is that I, I get the feeling that the reason that you have to kind of sneak around is I, I'm seeing, I'm definitely seeing a theme with these two wolves because these are two wolves. The Seven of Swords, we did, we had a tarot on it. It's, um, it's, it's not being able to say what you really think. You know, so it's not all a bad card. Yes, it is someone sneaking around. It's someone who's hiding. Um, or being stealth, which is also a fox or wolf kind of um, attitude. It's self-sufficiency. But what I'm getting here is that it's, I'm getting a sense that you you want to reach out to someone because you're really missing someone. You're, you're seeing something as a really lost opportunity. And it's almost like you want to you want to reach out and talk to this person but you feel like someone's watching your every move so just when you think that you're getting away with it you're not like and with this being swords the other thing that I'm getting here guys okay this is this is gonna sound crazy this is not really I've got to read it how I feel it and what I'm seeing you are really, really missing someone. There is something that was kind of broken here. Um, this could have been, this could be someone that you kind of had an emotional falling out with. And um, you, you're really, you're, you're upset that you, you know, we've got a lot of moonlight here, which is a lot of murky feelings. The other thing is that I feel like this person is almost holding on to you. Like you, you can't, you can't forget about them. But what's interesting about this is that in the distance, you see what looks like a, a smoke signal, right? You see someone sneaking away. And then here you see a bird coming. You really, really want to talk to someone. And you it's almost like you want to come up and offer this person a cup. Like you, you miss somebody and you want to take action about it, but you can't. The other thing that I'm getting is that you might be sending smoke signals like you might be sending I'm getting you're sending messages you're sending heart centered messages but you're doing it in code you're doing it in code you are upset about something you're upset you're missing somebody you're you're longing the other thing you're longing to talk to someone you you can't get away from the feeling of this person it's like it's like they have a hold on you and what you're doing is it's I think you're watching this person from a distance. The other thing I get with this this hawk is that you might have mutual friends. Uh, the, uh, swords and hawks also mean like communication, like text messages or, or DMs or chats. Um, but I get a strong sense that you have a bead on what this person's doing um, because you have mutual friends. Um, but what I'm really seeing is you see how the, you're standing in the ocean here and standing in the ocean here. The other thing that I, you know what I'm almost getting, guys? Um, the other thing that I get is that it, this is like this is like midday because of the shadows. This is late day. And then this is the nighttime. You're delaying taking action. It's almost like day by day things are passing because the other things are cups or... Um, well, cups can be weeks, but um, swords are definitely, sword, swords are more like hours. Um, I'm sorry, I don't mean to go off on a tangent. Um, but what I'm really getting here is that it's almost like, I'm really getting a sense like during the day, you can't, you can't sneak around in the light of day, so you have to send up signals. You have to send up smoke signals 
like you again i'm getting a strong sense of speaking in code and then the other thing that then then you're standing in the waves you know and you're watching from a distance and you're getting information from either either watching somebody's social media um when I see that hawk, I almost think of those little scrolls of paper that you put on. Again, I'm getting a lot of talking in code. Um, and But then you're waiting. You're waiting and watching. And then what I'm getting is by the end of the night, by the end of the day, you haven't taken any action. You know what it is? It's, it's almost like you're getting a status. Like you're getting a status. You're sending out a signal. You're getting a signal back. I think it would be okay for you, you know, you're getting you're getting the green light to move forward, but someone is watching you. I, I really get the sense like someone has you kind of on their radar or on their thumb. And this this could be, you know, um again, you know, that 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 real sinister looking shadow. And look at the expression on that fox. He looks almost resentful. Um but what, what I'm just kind of getting, and, and I don't think this is bad, I just think um, I'm definitely getting the sense that you're you're having heartfelt messages, a heartfelt exchange with someone. It seems like it's in code. It makes you feel better. It makes you feel better, but it's almost like you can't, you can't, you're, you're, you're not approaching this person in the open. And you have a lot of, you have a, a strong heartfelt connection to this person. And then what I'm getting is that you 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 kind of get you get you get a bead on what's going on. You get a, you have this kind of weird um, communication and code, but you you still stand in the waves. You still you still stand there with your cup. You don't take any action. And then by at night, I'm getting a strong sense that at night that's when you feel it the strongest. It's almost like you stay up at night thinking, well, I knew what was going on. They communicated to me. Why didn't I communicate back? Why didn't I? And I feel this loss like at night when the moon is out. You stay up at night missing somebody. Mm, I'm sorry. Now, th what's interesting is that this could be like a family member, but I'm getting more love with this. I'm definitely getting more love with this. Um... You know, um, the only other thing that I can kind of read from that is maybe that you you might be watching someone else kind of be this way, kind of being a little clandestine, you know, and it's upsetting you, right? It's upsetting you, but um, I do get a sense more like this is your energy, but I am definitely getting a strong sense. You were speaking in code to somebody. Um, it's almost like, you know how sometimes you can have a language with someone? You can This can be a best friend. It can be, you know, it can, I'm de definitely getting a little bit more of a love thing. But um, you know how, um, you know how when, when you're trying not to get in trouble with your parents and, you know, your best friend calls you and it's almost like the code, like the, you know, the eagle has landed, the eagle has landed and you're like, okay, okay, you know exactly what that means, right? Um, um, and what it is is on the surface, anybody who's watching you would make it, it would seem like just like a regular conversation. But I think you're referencing things that mean, that have um, nuanced messages in it, like heartfelt messages. Could be music, could be lyrics and music. Um, either that or if there was some kind of analogy you know, maybe from a memory or a movie or like an ins inside joke that's entirely possible. But I do get a strong sense that you feel like you have to speak in code and that someone, it's its almost like someone's still catching you. Like they see you, you know, what does that weird text mean? What is that about? And you know what it's about, but it's almost like you have to kind of stealth around. But it's its in the middle of the night that you actually, the other thing I get is in the middle of the night is when you let your feelings out. You, you know, during the day, you see how, you see how stoic this guy looks, you know, he looks so strong and, you know, from a distance getting, I think you're missing somebody. You're missing somebody. And it's almost like you want to take action, but you can't. You feel like you're watched. If you do take action, it's very small little things and it's encrypted.
it's encrypted in some kind of private language that you share with the person that you're pining over. But it's not a bad energy, but you know, the other thing is that there are two cups that remain. So you can always, you know, you can always break out of this energy and turn and look at the two cups that remain. Now, the, the end of the week is quite beautiful. This is not bad energy at all. The other thing is the Knight of Cups is, 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 is going on a journey. So, you know, this, this can be a, you know, this can be a journey. The other thing is I do think that you're, you're well informed. You know what's going on. You, you, you know that, you know what's, what's, you got the 411. Um, but what the, the Emperor kind of fell out like this, which I kind of feel like is this ramp to the end of the week. I'm really kind of getting like a boss. Maybe this is a boss. The other thing that I kind of get is that this could be your energy. Again, this is King Arthur. I think this is a really great card. And the other thing I get is the sword from the stone. He's there with the sword and the stone. But the end of the week is the page of coins, which is the, 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 um, the page of coins. You know what I'm almost getting is that I do think that you're going to stand in your power. I think by the end of the week, and again, it, it looks like a ramp, right? It looks like a ramp. I think you're going to take some kind of, by the end of the week, I think you are, I think this energy is related. I think by the end of the week, you are going to take some kind of um, real world, because the cups are all like emotions, right? The cups are emoting to someone, you know, connecting over something. Um, emotionally but the pentacles are the are actual real world things and you do you kind of see too they're kind of reindeer but they look like elk you know this is a Swedish story but um and with the mountains I really do think I think of challenge and with the sword and the stone you know what I'm really getting from this guys is I think I think by the end of the week you're gonna embrace your power like the only one person could pull the sword from the stone and that was King Arthur and that's King Arthur, right? He's the emperor, right? No one, you know, he's not just the king, he's the emperor, right? He's the only man who can pull that sword from the stone. So I, I think you're really going to step into your power. If there's someone that you've been wanting to talk to or, or reach out, um, I think by the end of the week, you are going to do that. And, and again, this being in a, in a physical sense, like, I think you are going to actually reach out to someone. Um, either, yeah, and I do get a sense like it's your energy. Um, the other thing that I kind of get is that, you know, the, um, in both of these cards, you see this kind of radiating, like this circle of light, right? The sun coming up from behind the mountains, and the mountains mean challenge. Um, but the beautiful thing about the Page of Coins is that it's a small little act. Like, um, the other thing is that the end of this week does go into Valentine's Day. Um, I was going to kind of keep the more lovey part of the reading for next week, since that's going to be the actual, you know, the beginning of um, next week's weekly energy would be Valentine's Day itself. But you, you know that, um, you know, um, if you're in North America, there is a holiday on Monday. So the, the end of this week would be the Friday that goes into that weekend. Um, so it is quite possible, it's quite possible that you might just kind of step into your power and say, screw whoever's watching me, I don't care, I'm not going to do any more of these smoke signals. You might actually, and again, that it's like you, again, with that circle of light, like you're going to, it's like the light breaking out from behind the mountains, you're going to go do what you want to do, right? You're going to, um, and it might be something little. I kind of get the sense like it might be a Valentine or something like that. I don't think that this is anything digital. Um, but one thing with Arthur is that the sword that he pulls from the stone is a sword. So that could be communication. But um, what I'm getting is that it's almost like it's it's a powerful message. Um, but it's you, and again, King Arthur's wearing armor, so he's going to be like, I, I'm the king, I'm the emperor, I'll do what I please. Um, the other thing that I kind of get is that if this is, um, one other thing that I kind of get, which is a little bit different, if you are a father, if you are a father, it's quite possible that, um, you know, um, 
you you might have to um you might have to kind of put your foot down um to uh like have if if this is some kind of like um custody thing or maybe it's like you spend time with your child on certain weekends that kind of deal um i i get the sense that you no longer um you don't you don't want to have to like you know you want to be above board with any interactions um so I, I almost get the sense like you're kind of, I'm getting a sense of putting your foot down to say, look, I, it's Valentine's Day weekend. I want to see them this weekend, or I want to, I, I want to see them at least on Friday or Saturday. You will do this, right? Um, uh, it's, it's almost like, you know, no more, no BS, right? I do think this energy is separate from this middle energy. I think I get a more romantic vibe and then I get a more father and child vibe here. Um, if you are a grandparent, it's quite possible that this could be, um, you know, you visiting a, a grandchild. Um, the other thing that I get is that possible, maybe you get some kind of little physical, like again, I'm getting a Valentine, guys. I'm getting like a, like a little paper Valentine, maybe, maybe a little box of chocolates or something like that. Something just really sweet. Um, now it's quite possible if this energy is related to this middle of the energy, um, I almost get the sense that you're, I, I do feel that sense of like you putting your foot down, like I'm not going to deal with any more of this BS. I'm going to do what I want to do. And you'll turn around instead of watching from a distance, you're actually going to walk up to someone and give them, you know, something. Um, now the last way that I kind of read this is that it could be that an emperor kind of like a boss kind of person is watching you like it might be the person because it did it kind of fell at an angle. So it's quite possible that that shadow that you're kind of trying to avoid <laughs> is um, some kind of boss. Um, but King King Arthur is such a good, good person. Um, one of the, one last way that I kind of read this is that it's quite possible that your boss kind of helps you out a little bit. Maybe, maybe um, somebody kind of somebody in power is really gonna uh, give you. Um, this also could be like some kind of small financial bonus. Like, um, you know, they might, they might give you, um, a little, a little extra, you know, a little, a little something, um, you know, for, for the work that you've done. But, um, I do kind of get the sense, like, it's almost like you want to give somebody something, but you're afraid to because you, you feel like you're being watched. And by the end of the week, you're just going to be like, nope. Just like, like I said in the intro, I got the emperor in my read last week. And at the end of the week, I was just like, I, I was really like, I, I don't care. We're doing it this way. That's how we're doing it. No arguments, <laughs> no arguments. But, um, that's really sweet. It might be a small gift again, that it could be a small gift that a child gives you or that you give to a child. Um, or it's quite possible that it's a small gift that you give to someone else. Like it's again, it's it's like it's like you saying I'm I um I'm I do what I want. Like I I I'm the only you're you're the only one that can pull the sword from the stone. So no one's going to question you. You you're the king. You're the emperor. And if if you want to give someone a Valentine, if you want to give someone a small physical gift, you know, come at me, bro. It's kind of like what it is. But it is. It's being very brave. The other thing I get is with the sword and the stone, everybody was watching, right? That's the other thing I get. It's almost like you go from sending smoke signals to everybody watching you as you pull the sword from the stone. And that's... This, this might be some kind of endeavor that only you can do, right? Like some kind of job only you can do. Um... But I do get the sense that it's almost going to be, you know, everybody watching you while you, um, while you give or, or, or take some kind of action, give, give some, I'm getting a gift kind of feeling, but you got two cards. You got pig spirit, which says, use your mind wisely. And then it says hummingbird spirit, which says be here now, right? Now I definitely, I get a strong sense that this is like, you know, this is kind of related to the Five of Cups because when we get in the Five of Cups, we really get kind of obsessive. We only think about the spilled cups. We don't see what remains, right? So sometimes, I, and I get this card quite a lot. It kind of reminds me, you know, energy follows thought, right? It's like, it's like creative, it's like an, what you envision 
happens, right? Um, another reader reminded me of a really great quote. It says, whether you do or you don't, you're right. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's like, you know, be careful what you think about. If you think that you, if you think that all is lost, then that's what you're manifesting. Um, if you think, if you feel like somebody's watching your every move and is out to get you, then that's, that's what you're going to get, right? That's what you're going to attract. So um, the other thing I get is that you see that the pig has wings. So you know how you've heard the expression, when pigs fly. Pigs can really fly in your imagination, right? There are also numbers here. We've got 4, 7, 47, which boils down to 11, which is a, um, a spiritual number. It's a wish number. And then um, we also got hummingbird spirit, which is really beautiful. And that's number 34, which uh, combines to a 7. And it says, and you got the Seven of Swords here. Uh, be here now, right? Um, did you, uh, you know, I've read a statistic, a hummingbird's heart beats so fast. I think it's over a hundred times a, se uh, um, a second. It's, it, it, it's so, it's just going, 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 going. Um, so I think, I think your mind is always going, 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 going. Um, the other thing that I get is that sometimes I do think that you might be in your head a little bit, like you might, um, I think it's just kind of asking you to be present, right? You know, you're racing thoughts, um, either that or are you moving so fast, you know? And again, the Four of Swords is about slow, is taking a necessary break, right? Um, the other thing I get with the Page of Coins is you might be starting something, um, but you're, you might be in a learner's mindset, this could also be a boss asking you to start something new, and it might be something that you've never done before. Um, but you you want to learn how to do it really well and 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 correctly. Like you you don't mind going slow and learning it the right way. But wow, guys, that's a really beautiful week. That's not bad. That's a really good energy, and definitely if it's if Mercury retrograde is getting on getting on your last nerve, you know, <laughs> we, we're, you're not alone. You're not alone. All right, so second deck, we've got the uh, Slow Tarot by Lacey Bryant. And as I said in the intro, this is, um, this is a, um, a deck by a, um, an artist in California. And she has, um, she's on Instagram and Facebook. And right now she is um, in her community. They're doing, um, they're, for the, the Chinese New Year, they're painting um, a ceramic ox oxen because it's the year of the bull it's the year of the ox and um and she's it's such beautiful work i, I don't know if it's for a parade or something um but uh if you check out her instagram or her facebook ooh, balance that's really that's my favorite card in this deck actually um if you um if you check out her instagram she's uh helping with that project and it's really cool it's just awesome to watch so if you if you're so inclined you know please check her out and her name and the link to this deck is in the description box. But So deck number two, the Slow Tarot. What's your energy? Beginning of the week. Beginning of the week, please. Okay, thank you. Ooh, we just had a tarot on the Seven of Cups. This was another good, good uh, version of that. Okay, I'm going to put that there. Middle of the week, please. Oh, gosh, okay. End of the week. Okay, please clarify the death stance of the death for the kind of ones. We've got three major arcana and the fool on the bottom. Five of, five of wands wants to pop out. Ah. You got a little drama going on, just a little. You know, it's okay. We all got drama. <laughs> okay, let's get your oracle cards. So let's pull two of them. So first oracle card. What's the advice for pile number two this week? Okay, end of the week. Interesting energy, guys. We got seven, 
11. All right. Number 11 has been, the combined number 11 has been kind of popping up too. That'll, that'll be a common. All right, so beginning of the week. Wow, guys. Oh, this is really quite cute. Um, beginning of the week, you're going to be in a real daydreamy mood. Um, again, we just had a tarot on the Seven of Cups. It was uh, just on, on this last Tuesday. So if you, if you feel like that energy is really speaking to you, you may want to check it out. This is a really beautiful cup um, cup card, actually. You see the cups hanging from trees, and it has different things, and the person doesn't know which one to choose. Now, what it is is that the Seven of Cups, um, I kind of get the sense, like, this is, this, yeah, you know, um, the crown, the, the, the displaying energy is the Two of Cups. So I kind of read this one of two ways. Beginning of the week, you're either going to be, um, you, you either have like a few options when it comes to love. And just like we mentioned in the first deck, um, this week, um, Sunday, this, the, this, uh, next Sunday, so not, not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow is Valentine's Day. And if you're in North America, there's a, there's a federal holiday on the Monday. So it's kind of like that long weekend. So, um, no pressure. There's always pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. Um, that, you know, of course it's, it's, it's always, okay, do you have enough Valentine's for everyone? Are you going out to dinner? Are you buying the roses? Because now it's like a three day weekend. That's going to be nothing but love. So if you're single, get ready for a parade. Oh, um, what is it? I always laugh anytime I watch the movie um, uh, Bridget Jones because she's like smug married um, or um, uh, smug couples, and and I know it's not like that. I'm I'm not poking fun at it. Um, it's it's you know everybody who's in love has the right to uh, to enjoy a day, and most of the time it's not all that it's trumped up to be because when you're married, you know to even have a day, you know to have a time alone with your spouse when you have kids and jobs and life and pandemic and everything else that's a blessing but um but what I'm kind of seeing here is that you know um the beginning of the week you know the first thing that you're thinking of is okay you know um end of the week is Valentine's Day you could quite possibly be thinking ahead or planning ahead right um I know I'm kind of like that too um my 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 day job is a little demanding I you know it's it, it really I'm I'm wiped out by the time Friday rolls around so if if I have to get something done I really have to kind of plan it out and follow that plan um in order to uh you know pace myself and have enough energy to get every to get stiff done um, to get shit done. <laughs> so, um, but what I'm kind of seeing here is the beginning of the week, you've got the seven of cups, which is really about having a lot of options. It is also about daydreaming. Um, and then it's crowned by the two of cups. Now this two of cups is really beautiful. I actually used this card in the how to tarot because you have all these white roses. And what's beautiful is you see two people from different backgrounds, but one person has, and I love this. He has a dragonfly tattoo, and I'm sorry, the dragonflies mean a lot to me. It's a spirit animal. It's a, it, it has a very profound meaning for me and my family. Um, but you see somebody who he's, um, you know, he's got a tattoo on his on his neck, and then when and he's holding a red cup, and he's wearing white, and she's holding a white cup. So it is. It's like a yin yang kind of circle. You can tell these two are counterparts. And what's beautiful is at first I thought that she was wearing um, a jacket, but this is tattoos. She's got a sleeve of tattoos and she's wearing a red dress. And, you know, the lady in red with white flowers, white roses, this roses, um, that there's nothing more romantic and screams Valentine's Day than that, right? The woman's wearing red. Um, so what I'm kind of getting here is I think you are thinking ahead to the weekend. Um, you're thinking ahead to Sunday or that three-day weekend if you have a three-day weekend where you're thinking, okay, this is going to be a weekend, oh, love, you know, who do I want to spend it with? The other thing, so it's one of two things. You either got quite, you know, you, <laughs> if you're a singleton, you might be pulling out your little black book and going like, okay, who's going to be, you know, who's going to, who am I going to be sitting with in, in the middle of the, 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 the meadow of roses, right? Uh, the other thing is maybe who, who is it that I want to give roses to? Um, so it could be that. 
it could be that. And um, we talked about this. The the Seven of Cups is kind of that Walter Mitty kind of lost in daydreams. Because the other thing that I get from this is that that's a very daydreamy scene, right? That looks so perfect. That looks like a scene in the movies, right? That doesn't look like a scene in reality. So what I'm kind of getting here is that you might really you're you're either you either have one person in mind. Like you're thinking ahead, like, ah, I would love to, you know, I, uh, if I want so-and-so to be my Valentine and you're, you're dreaming about them, right? You're dreaming, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll have tea in this meadow of white roses. The other thing is white, white roses is purity, right? That's, that's like, I'm seeing true love, true love there. Um, but the, so the beginning of the week, you might, you might, what it is, is you might be planning for the weekend and you might really be up in your head with those plans. Um, the other thing that I kind of get is that if you do have a love a spouse or something like that, um, you know what I'm almost getting? It's like you're at work. Uh, remember, this is a Walter Mitty kind of, um, what are, Walter Mitty is that, um, is that character who's always got his head in the clouds. Like I, um, he, you know, if he's walking in the grocery store, he's going to pretend like he's, um, he's, he's walking into a castle to slay a dragon. Or, you know, if, if, um, if he steps onto the, the train, you know, to go to work, he imagines that he's the captain of a ship in the 1700s. You know, it's like that really serious, you know, daydreamy energy. So what I'm kind of getting here is I, I get the sense that maybe you're at work and work is so boring or so just, you, you don't want to be there or something like that, um, that, Either that or you're so excited for the weekend, you might be dreaming of your person and thinking, oh, okay, this weekend we're going to go and have a candlelight dinner and we're going to we're going to do this and do that. So you could quite honestly be in your mind planning for the future, but you're not in reality. You know, your your body's at work, but your mind isn't because you're thinking about what you want to do by the weekend. Um, one other thing that I kind of see with this is that if you are single, um, you could be uh, daydreaming about how you're going to spend your Valentine's. Um, so that could, you know, you could be dreaming of your crush or you could, if you do, if you're talking to more than one person, you might be uh, imagining how each of those scenarios would go. Like, okay, if, if I ask so-and-so out and they say, no, this is my backup plan. Um, so you might be kind of picking and choosing. Um, but I am getting kind of like a strong sense that you know who it is that you want to ask out. Um, the other thing that I kind of get is that you might be feeling a little overwhelmed. Maybe you really, um, the other thing I get from this, and, and this is so true of Valentine's Day, there's always so much freaking pressure. Like if you're a guy and you have to, it's like, okay, I have to make sure that I, I the other thing is you, you know that you can't, well, uh, some guys do this. If you're that, no, no, no fault. I'm not judging. I'm just saying if you wait until Saturday afternoon, the night before, all you're going to have is some wilted, wilted freaking, I don't know, like azaleas left. <laughs> the roses will be gone. <laughs> and so I'm almost thinking that kind of energy, like maybe you're, you're planning ahead to be like, okay, how far in advance can I buy these roses? Or I know her favorite flower is white roses. How do I get those? And you're just imagining it that it's going to be perfect. Um, and this is all beautiful, you know, sunshine and butterflies kind of energy. But um, I am kind of sensing the, the overwhelm or feeling overwhelmed. Maybe you're thinking, okay, where can I go to get the flowers? Where can I go? Do, how far in advance do I have to make reservations? Um, I remember her saying that she liked this. I wonder if that's that's true and that she really, really does like that because I'll be dropping 50 bucks on that, you know, 50 bones, you know, kind of stuff like that. So um, same thing in reverse, you know, you might be, you might be really um, kind of overwhelmed. Like the other thing that I kind of get with this is it being pandemic world, maybe, mm, well, cups is definitely more of a dreamy energy. I'm not getting, it's not a real Virgo energy. Like you're not checking off a checklist or anything. I think you might be concerned about social distancing, but I think you're more, this energy kind of strikes me as more like you're overwhelmed, making sure that all of it is perfect. Uh, um, not perfect, but that, um, that, that it turns out as dreamy as you want. Honestly, I do just feel like you're daydreaming, you're daydreaming at work or you're, you're imagining how it's going to be. Um, uh, but I, I do get a sense of a little bit of, of, um, 
kind of feeling a little scattered in the details like you um, you're dreaming that it's going to be this way but you might not be thinking about okay well I have to go pick up the flowers by this time or you know I have to make reservations or how do we want to handle this where it's social distance friendly you know blah 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 but that's still a beautiful beginning of the week now the middle of the week this is really interesting guys is that you got the empress and then the crown of it is the ten of wands now the ten of wands is really it's a very industrious card but it is talking about working to death like you see this person you see he's older and he's a workman you can see how strong he is right he's done this for a long time the other thing is you see all these bees, so I think of a busy bee, you know? But this person is carrying a lot on his own shoulders. You know, it, it looks like he should be retired at home, but he's still out in the fields under the hot sun working his butt off, right? Um, and underneath it, we've got the Empress, which is really about, um, you know, motherhood energy. So I kind of read this one of two ways. Um, the middle of the week, um, um, you could be working really hard for either your your mother or if you are a man watching this and assign the genders as they resonate um, you could be working really hard for your spouse um, you know like maybe um, again uh, maybe you have to work some extra hours or, or stay late at work or you know um, your wife is calling you and like hey honey you need to pick up the milk and you had a really long day you're exhausted and you're like fine I'll go pick up the milk um, I do kind of get the sense like you're you either have a mother who's really getting making you work really hard like you're 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 doing going the extra mile but the other thing I kind of get is that you're you're picking up extra chores for your mother um so this could be where your mom maybe asks you to come over and help her move furniture or something like that um or your mom you know it's almost like you're you're tired and you're you're doing the extra work the other thing i get is that maybe you're doing some kind of chore or errand for your mom um that you you probably really wanted to say no to but you don't because it's your mom um, if it's your wife, again, I do kind of sense like, you know, it's almost like if this is the mother of your child or something like that, it's like, again, you know, you're, go you're working even harder to take care of that, you know, take, take care of them so they can be at home, you know, taking care of others. But I'm definitely getting more of a mom vibe. Um, one other th way that I kind of read this is that if you are a mom, um, and you don't even really have to have children either. Sometimes you can just be the nurturer of other people. Like the Empress is a good leader too. So maybe if you're, if you're, if you're a boss of, uh, or this could even be your coworkers, um, you could really be nurturing other people by taking on more than the lion's share of work right like maybe you're trying to help out other people by staying late you know maybe one of your coworkers says oh you know i got scheduled to close but i can't stay can you help me out you're nurturing or you're you're mothering them by taking on their workload um one other way that i kind of read this because the empress is very creative um she's she is she's you know um and the other thing is i see a lot of wheat in this picture so i see like a lot of harvest um, so one other way I can kind of read it is quite honestly, maybe if you're doing some, um, activities, uh, I kind of think of it this way. I parallel it to my life. Um, I, I like to send cards. I think that they're very encouraging, especially, you know, with world events, you know, to get happy mail and with it being Valentine's day over the weekend. Again, this is the Friday before the, 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 the day. And then Monday is a holiday. Um, maybe you're, you're, you're working extra hard to, to do, you know, to, to get, you know, candies, to get, you know, um, hearts, and again, to make it social distant friendly. Um, maybe you're doing, um, you're putting in the extra effort and it's, 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 it's exhausting you, right? You know, maybe you worked all day, you had extra things to do. Um, but I just get the sense like middle of the week, you're going to be taking care of other people and it's going to wear you the hell out. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, you're really going to be, you're going to be a busy bee. Um, but I do get the sense that some kind of creative project, you know, um, I, I, I can raise my hand at this. I've got to create 30, 37 Valentine's 
Yeah. Um, it's not going to be too bad because I'm a good stamper, and but I do have to sign my name 37 times. So, you know, that's going to, I'm, I'm going to pretend. There you go. That's that Walter Mint Mitty energy. I'm going to pretend like I'm a world famous author and I'm going to sign my name until my hand falls off. Um, <laughs> but it's kind of like that. That's, yeah, I'm definitely kind of getting that. Maybe it's some kind of creative thing that you got to knock out. Now, this is really interesting. The last deck, I don't know if it's something with the way I'm shuffling the cards. The last deck did it this way, too. The card fell just like this. And these are two major arcanas. This is the High Priestess and the Chariot. And what's beautiful, what's interesting about this combination, guys, is that in the traditional Chariot and the Rider Waite Smith, you see the, the person, the, the Chariot driver, um, holding in two Sphinxes, Sphinxes. I always think of that line from when Harry met Sally. <laughs> when Harry met Sally and Billy Crystal goes, I think, you know, I think the Pharaohs really was just a secret comic strip about a guy named Sphinxy. Um, <laughs> but, I'm sorry, I always think of that. Um, but this is interesting because the chariot in this deck is not Sphinx. It's, it's, a, it's a bicycle, right? And it's someone moving ahead, right? Two wheels moving in tandem, right? She's, she's making strides. And you see the light dawning right this really looks like a winter scene to me too um what's also interesting is that she's got a lot of books she's got a lot of books right um so um so the the chariot doesn't have sphinxes here but she, you're really going places like you're you're making strides you're moving right along and then by the end of the week you've got the the high priestess and this is interesting the high priestess in this one does have sphinx has the two sphinxes in this card. So instead of the chariot, so I really these two bridge together. Um, and if you look close, it looks like the same girl, except, you know, in the in the chariot, it looks like a young girl, but here she looks like a, a more mature, again, she looks like a, um, like, a, again, like a high priestess. And this is really beautiful because um, you've got the roots of a tree and you've got a moon. The, the imagery in this, this image is really quite gorgeous. But, um, what I get from this, and again, it doesn't mean anything wild is going to happen. Um, I think that you're going to be working really hard, but I think it's going to be a creative endeavor. Again, you might be um, you might be event planning or taking care of other people. If you are a mom, you're just you're knocking it out. Like you're you're going to be tired. Um, I, I do almost get a sense like you're staying up late at night to get everything done. Um, one other thing that I kind of get here is that just just to throw it out there, if we have any other tarot readers that watch, because uh, goodness knows I've got a I watch several other readers. Um, so um, if we have other readers, this could be your energy where you're not only keeping up with life and, you know, spouses and everything, you might be doing extra readings this week. And again, you know, you're staying up late to do it. Um, but you're you're moving right along. It's gonna these creative projects are gonna move along. Like you're gonna keep everything in stride. Um, you're gonna keep everything in stride. And the week, the other thing I get is that the week is almost gonna fly by. <laughs> the week is gonna fly by. Um, you know what I'm almost getting, guys. Uh, I do get a sense that if you are a reader watching this, you're juggling a lot. It's almost like you have so many, it's almost like you have irons in every single area. You got irons in work, you got irons in love. Hey, hey sweetie, where do you, what do you want to do for Valentine's? You might be doing something creative, um, taking care of children. Um, you know, if you are a reader, you're putting out extra readings this week. Um, which reminds me, I actually, I had promised to do a post of the collection of my love cards. Um... But what I'm getting is if you are single, if you are single, um, if you are single, I kind of get the sense um, you're going to be moving right along um, with your creative projects. And by the end of the week, before, because the book, the book in Lenormand means mystery it means something is revealed right and the high priestess you see that she is floating she's floating in space in front in between the two sphinxes so the sphinxes um the 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 sphinx acts they they ask they they're the keepers of the mystic riddles like they're the it's it's very philosophical 
The other thing I get is it's um, we've got the number two, but in this deck it looks like 11. It looks like, you know, two bars parallel to one another. I'm getting a strong sense, guys, that by the end of the week, um, you're going to be, you're going to feel more, you're going to, you um, if, if you're, if you're a mom and a, and a wife, um, or a husband and a wife, you're going to feel real spiritually in tune. It's almost like, I always say the high priestess is kind of the it girl. Um, you're kind of, um, it, it's almost like by the, the end of the week, you're going to be like in a quiet place of, of real spiritual balance. It's almost like you're going to, um, you're going to have everything in, in its place. Um, the other thing that I kind of get is that people will really be looking at you like, um, the thing that's so, if you, if you watch the How to Tarot about the High Priestess, she is the it girl because she, she is, she's so mysterious. When you look at her, um, this is the kind of person who is so solid in what they believe or solid in, in, uh, they, they, they have a sense of knowing. It's almost like they know they're in tune with the higher, um, forces of the universe. So I, I feel like by the end of the week, um, people will be, if, if somebody wants you to be their Valentine, they're really going to be looking at you like you were all that in a bag of chips, and you're just going to be sitting there like spiritually enlightened, doing your own thing, and they're going to be like, oh wow, how do I even approach that her, right? <laughs> and so you're just going to be really in your energy. The other th way that I kind of read this is if you are single, um, the um, the book being closed, and again in Lenormand, and the chariot is it's got books all over this. Um, there's going to be some kind of mystery. I think it's going to be a mystery how you're going to spend your Valentine's Day. Um, I think the universe knows. The universe knows. Um, and all I know is that by the middle of the week, heading into the weekend, you know, and goodness knows you get the Empress and the High Priestess. That is it.com. That's bomb.com. You are just, you're on it, in it, on it, all over it wearing the crown. You're wearing the crown. The other thing I get is that I think that you're wearing a real spiritual crown too. This is just a really wise person. Um, so if you're single, it's one of those things that I think that you're really, you're taking care of other people. This might be kind of a platonic Valentine's Day where maybe if you don't have a one-on-one -on -one person, you might, you still have Valentine's. Like if you, you know, you send a Valentine to your best friend, send one to your mom, you check in with your family, um, you, 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 you know, do little special things for your coworkers and you're just content right? You don't need anything. You're, you, where you are in your life, you, you know, again, it's like you, you're okay with where you are. So you're just going to be in that peaceful kind of balanced state where you, you don't need anything more. You can, it's like a, it is a contentment. Um, and it, it feels very spiritually enlightened. Now, the other way that I kind of read this is with the book being closed, that's a mystery that has not been revealed yet. And that's the other thing about the High Priestess is that she's, she, she knows what's going on in the higher realm as well as in the, the 3D. So it's quite possible that it's, it's the, the, the way your Valentine's Day is going to go is a mystery and the, the, the High Priestess is kind of winking at you like you'll find out when you get there right? When the weekend comes, you'll see. Wink, wink. And um, I think it is also telling you to trust because this, um, but I would say just do your own thing. That's the other thing. And I do think that you're doing something very creative, something that's you. Um, but either way you look at it, if you're, if you're doing your thing, you're going to just feel like, wherever I'm at, I'm good. I'm, I'm where I need to be. Um, either that, or if you, if you, you were dreaming at the beginning of the week. So maybe, you know, that the universe is, 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 you know, it's, it's like, give it over to the universe. Just imagine what your outcome wants to be. Um, the other thing is the Empress is real creative for that. It's interesting. The Emperor came out in the first deck. So we had Emperor in first deck and Empress in the second. But that, uh, that could be your mother, though. It could be your mother or the mother of your children. Now, your two oracle cards are very freaking spiritual, guys. You've got so much spirituality. This is, 
You know, this is some really, um, this is some really uh, evolved stuff. I think, I, I always think that you're a very evolved soul here. You got the Scarab, uh, which is number 52, and that boils down to a seven, and we've got another seven in the first position. Um, but Scarab Beetle sp Spirit, and it says, magic works through you. And that's another Egyptian thing. You know, you got the Sphinx, and then you got the Scarab. Maybe, um, maybe Egyptian symbolism will really be speaking to you this week. Um, the other thing is that the scarab is about um, is about um, the scarab is about regeneration. It is almost like reincarnation, and um, I do kind of get that. And also, the imagery in the background of the high priestess really looks kind of similar. You see that kind of speckled gold, um, but the scarab is really about. Um, Magic, I almost think of kind of like the magician, but I am getting more of a, I'm getting a, a I'm getting a sense of, of get in tune with the universe. I think you're really feeling in tune with the universe. Um, there's, there's a cosmic level of balance here, and I know it's just a weekly energy, but I just feel like by the end of the week, um, whatever you want to happen, if you just give it over to the universe or be content where you're at, um, there's going to be this magic that just kind of comes through. The other thing that I get is that the, the nurturance, that, the creativity that you put out into the world, the nurturance that you put out in the world is really going to take you places. And it, it, it gives back to you. It feels like a conduit, right? Um, and the other beautiful thing is that um, you got spider spirit, which says make your dreams real. Make your dreams real. Again, and... It, make your dreams real um i do sense that if if there was someone that you kind of had your eye on um i i really get the sense of kind of like again and spider webs are the um you see spider webs if if you uh, uh spider webs are like the connectivity with the universe you pull on one thread and it affects everything else everything is interwoven and interconnected um and the interesting thing is uh, the spider is 56, which boils down to um, 11, which looks like this, looks like the two of the high priestess, right? I do think that, um, I think you're going to be in a real high vibe at the end of the week. And if you were dreaming about someone, I think, I think it's going to be a matter of manifesting them, honestly, and I know that sounds crazy. But um, I also think that the universe has a real surprise in store for you. Um, the other thing I kind of get with this is that, you know, so many times we try to, um, you have, what I'm getting, so many times we try to control the outcome of things. And when you try to control the outcome of things, sometimes it, it throws a wrench in the work, uh, in the works. Like if you've ever read Rhonda Bird's The Secret, um, it's like it's it's they call it putting out a purchase order, right? Like if you just imagine, if you daydream what you want and let it go and let the universe make it happen for you, you just um, the other thing is that the empress is receptive. It's receiving. It's not active. It's not taking action. It's just sitting back and receiving. High priestess is lean back, right? The chariot is about um, the chariot is about channeling two opposing energies. So this could be your willpower, but I think that you know work hard to take care of other people, work hard to nurture other people. Um, but when it comes to your dreams, kind of lean back, let that energy go out into the universe. You see how much you see how much radiation is there. Like not in a weird way, but it, doesn't it look like it? It looks like like invisible energy and that's just that's i think that's just you know coming off you in waves and i think it's one of those things where instead of saying okay i want this outcome you must bring me this outcome imagine it and just let your energy lean back and let the universe bring it to you and i think you're going to have a really beautiful surprise I, I i'm getting a strong sense that it's a very clear message Dream about it, imagine what you want, and then just kind of let it go and trust in the universe. And I think you do have trust in the universe. The energy coming off you is some is some amazing. You are, you're elevated, guys. You're, you're like lotus flower kind of enlightened. I'm getting a strong sense. I'm feeling like readers are here. Um, I don't know if you read cards. Maybe you do Reiki. 
maybe you do um, meditation or uh, Tai Chi or yoga. There's maybe you work with crystals. There's something I'm getting a strong, I'm getting a real, a new age. I'm getting a real strong energetic. Um, maybe you study astrology or Egyptian history, but, and I think, you know, though, I don't think, you know, uh, sometimes people stress out when things, when they, when they're out of control, I don't think that's you. I also get the sense that you might almost be too tired. <laughs> Work might be wearing your, your butt out, but, um, you're, you're, you're holding it together though. You're holding it together. Um, I think there's a really beautiful surprise though. And it's a mystery. That book is closed, but the universe is going to open it by the weekend. But maybe we'll get some more details. Uh, please, if you're so inclined, please uh, please uh, leave a, um, a comment. Um, maybe after the week is over. I'm really curious. This is some powerful energy, guys. Wow. And you know what it is? It's so interesting. As I'm reading your cards, I do. I, I sense energy as I'm reading. I get such a... It's, it's, it's a little bit of a... Uh, it's a little bit of a paradoxical energy because there you've got so much strength in you, but it's it's not it's not controlling. It's it's like it's like a calm strength. You're plugged in. You're plugged in, pile too. You just are. All right. So deck number three, we've got the spacious tarot. Oh, I love this deck. I need to spend some more time with this deck. There's a great reader here on YouTube. Her name is Katie Flowers, and she always talks about. She says. Um, your, your, your tarot decks are like your favorite pair of jeans, you know, and, and when you have 19 tarot decks, it's like, um, sometimes it's good to pare down, uh, Explorer of Wands, Knight, uh, Knight of Wands, um, Seven of Cups, wow, second time the Seven of Cups, and we just had a tarot on that, just had a tarot, all right, so let's go ahead and see, deck number three, uh, with the green fluorite, what is your energy for the week? Maybe the number three means something to you. That just came through. So your favorite number? Deck number three? Is that your favorite? Oh, three of cups. Oh, my God. <gasps> three, three, three. Okay, middle of the week. Okay, I'm going to get this session started. Okay, that came out in reverse. Ooh. Ooh, all right. Please clarify. Wow. Okay. Uh, can I get one clarifier for the Three of Cups, please? Okay. Hmm. Okay, um, end of your week, please. Oh, I love this deck. It speaks. Elder of Cups. Hmm. Wow. One, two, three. Three majors. Emperor. Emperor and Empress. Oh my gosh, guys. Okay. Um, we'll get into this. We'll definitely get into this. We've got, we had Emperor in this deck, Empress in this one, Emperor and Empress. We've got, yeah, we've got some powerhouses here. Okay, so let's get two. Uh, it seems like a lot of cards, but it's okay. We'll get through it. You know, I, I like to give you the time that you need. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to talk your ear off, but I, I try not to. That was a lucky time. That's interesting, because usually the Empress is like the higher, um, the, the Queen of Pentacles is usually kind of a lower octave of the Empress, like an echo of it, and she has a rabbit at her feet. And, and definitely rabbit is, uh, it's like a spring type energy. Okay, uh, second oracle card, please. Just one more message. Oh, okay, that went back in. Swan Spirit. Okay, I love these cards. The lighting doesn't do it justice. Time for a deep dive. Know your worth. Very cool. Very cool. All right. I'm for a deep dive. You got the, you got the Elder of Cups, which is a fish. That's so freaking cool, guys. All right. We've definitely got some deep energy here. We've got some deep energy. Now, okay. Hmm. 
All right. Now, what I'm seeing is the beginning of the week, and it was funny. I, I as I was as I was speaking, and I said, "Pile number three is your favorite favorite number of the three because I was sensing that, and the three of cups came out. But the three of cups is, um, you know, you see that kind of waterfall there, and you see three different cups. Um, what I am kind of getting from this is that um, three of cups, uh, we, and we had a tarot on it, um, is is really about like it is kind of like a, a having fun kind of card it really is about kicking your feet up sometimes it can be those celebrations like uh, you know it can be you know going going to the well when back back in normal times going to the bar with your friends or or going to a, a social event where everybody toasts and and, and laughs and dances um, sometimes it can be um, sometimes it could just be hanging out with your friends um, but um, sometimes it can mean three part, uh, third party situations. But um, what I'm getting from this is that um, I, I got a clarifier, and underneath it we got the hermit, um, which is really about like a kind of being on your own, kind of being on your own. So I kind of read this one of two ways. Um, one way that I kind of read it is that um, the first way that, that I'm kind of getting is that you might be escaping with your friends. Like maybe, um, again, sometimes you see in that situation where maybe your family is driving you crazy and, and you're just like, okay, I just got to get out of the house. I got to get, um, and what what you do is the, the way that you get away, like um, the, the hermit is about pulling away and um, he, it's in, you see how he's sitting in the middle of the forest with a light, right, with a lantern. Um, the hermit is really about um, isolation for the sake of looking back. Like it's, it's like, um, it's going to the mountaintop and um, reflecting on the events that have occurred in order to um, kind of sort it out in your own head. It's that, that, that good kind of isolation. So I kind of read this one of two ways. Um, you're either escaping um, with the help of your friends um, at the beginning of the week. So, you know, this could be Sunday, Monday or Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you know, kind of, you know, before the week begins. Um, you might, you know, you might be trying to get away from your family and having, you know, just getting around your buddies. Maybe you get around two other friends. Um, one other thing is that that might be your process on kind of, um, you know how sometimes when you, you, you have coffee or, you know, you, you get together for drinks with, and, and these do look like coffee cups or tea cups. So maybe you do get together um, and hang out with uh, other friends and talk about some of the stuff that's been going on in your life. Um, I get the sense that that's kind of like how you process that. Um, the hermit really is about being alone and kind of, it's about thinking back at uh, going over what happened um, in order to learn from it or in order to find your way forward, right? Um, the other thing that I kind of get here is that the emperor is kind of fell out on the side. So it's quite possible that you might be escaping a father figure. Um, you could be escaping a boss. Um, you know, what it might be is that maybe, maybe you have a lot of obligations during the day with your boss. And so, you know, then, you know, you clock out and then at the end of the day, you kind of, you go, you, you call up your friends or Skype your friends and that, that's your way of like kind of escaping and getting away. Um, one other way that I kind of see this is that maybe, maybe, um, maybe you are um, avoiding your friends a little bit because you need to be alone, right? You need to be alone. Um, one last way that I kind of get this is that maybe, um, maybe you're feeling kind of isolated. Uh, that's one other thing. Um, with this combination, it's quite possible, like maybe if you are a, a new parent, like um, if, if, if this is your, your husband or, or the father of your child, it's quite possible that maybe, um, you know, before, before the baby, because you know how hard it is when a, when a baby's little, um, you, you always have to be, you, it's like you have to be on all the time. You get no sleep, you get no rest. Everything is, you know, what does the baby need? So maybe, um, and your life is completely different, right? Um, I, I see that all the time, but you know, my, my best friend has, uh, three kids and, um, I, I knew when, when, you know, 
every single time one of the little ones came along, it, it would be like a good, you know, six months to a year before we really got a chance to hang out. Um, and uh, because she's busy, you know, she's she's got her priorities. I'm almost kind of getting this, like maybe um, you're either worried about your husband because maybe he, he usually hangs out with his friends often and um, because, you know, he's a parent, he's not able to do that. It's almost like he's isolated and he might be thinking about that or missing his friends. Um, one other way that I kind of read this is that, um, and this is just the beginning of the week energy, um, it could be that you're busy at work or you're a, or a boss, you know, like you might be feeling kind of isolated from your friends group. Like maybe you, you really, at the beginning of the week, you really want to relax and do kind of fun, you know, you want to sing, you want to dance, you want to kind of, you know, chill and have a, you know, have a beer with your friends, but you're working so hard or maybe you're on call for work. You, you know, if your boss texts you, you got to drop everything. So you are, you're feeling kind of, you've been real isolated and maybe work obligations have been doing that. Um, one last way that I kind of see this is it's quite possible that maybe um, you could feel like a father figure or someone that's kind of an authority might be trying to control um, who you hang out with. Um, I do get a strong sense that it's like you feel like, it, you know, you really want, you want to relax and just have fun but it's almost like underneath that one last way that i kind of read it is maybe you're just kind of wound up a little bit the emperor is a real is as a controlling energy in a good way he's a very organized person but it's one of those things where sometimes when you've been working 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 or you know you've just got you've got your whole world organized your friends when your friends do finally invite you out it's almost like you're there in body, but you're really not there in mind. Like in your mind, you you kind of feel like you're still at work or you wish that you were back at home. Um, I do kind of get a sense like it's almost like you wish you were alone, not in a bad way, but it's almost like you don't feel like partying. Um, the only other way that I read this is that if you did, um, if you were kind of being a little bit more social, and again, we said with the other piles, um, Sunday, um, so it's it's a week from tomorrow. Valentine's Day is a week from tomorrow. So I was really going to focus more on the love kind of side of it with next week's weekly energy. But if you're in North America, um, Monday is a federal holiday. So it becomes this uh, three-day weekend. And um, definitely by the beginning of the week, you're, you know, a lot of people are thinking, okay, you know, it's going to be a weekend of love, you know, um, who am I going to be talking to? Who am I going to be hanging out with? And Three of Cups can definitely be that kind of casual dating around. Um, here in this combination, it's almost like you don't feel like dating around or, um, you know, um, you might be reflecting on, you know, on again I'm, I'm getting a like it's almost like you're thinking about I I do I get it I get I get a strong sense I'm uh, you know what I'm almost getting I'm almost getting like a vibe like um you're you're maybe you were you used to be real good and and again you know we're all if, if you're watching this at the time the video posts um you know pre-pandemic you know we were so good about calling people and asking people out and now that we've had a, a solid almost year probably more than that of um of you know keeping six feet from everyone maybe it feels weird you know again um uh, the emperor can be a real controlled en energy you know the emperor really keeps um keeps himself in check um it's possible that um you you know usually when you would just call you know mingle and flirt and ask someone out you're really not feeling up to that it's almost like you feel too mature for that um I am getting more of a friend's vibe, though. I, I get a sense like maybe you've been working a lot. 
I don't know why I am getting like this strong like sense of isolation. It's almost like um, it's almost like you haven't had much time to yourself. So then when somebody, you know, you know how it is when it's that a little bit of that introverted feeling like you don't get much downtime. It's like it's the way that you, downtime is, you know, private alone time is how you decompress. And, you know, when you're when you got to be on all the time or socializing all the time. Um, you, you might be there in body, but not really in spirit, <laughs> you know, and, um, you know, the, the other thing is I do get kind of a sense, like someone might be kind of watching you or, or, you know, um, you might, you might feel a little isolated. Like you, you haven't really hung out with your friends or, or you haven't hung out with people in a long time. Uh, and that's, that's what you're, you really want to do at the beginning of the week. Now, middle of the week, this is interesting energy. You got, this came out so clearly. You got the guardian of wands, which is the queen of wands, but it came up in the reverse. And you see those flames. Those flames are really speaking to me. Now, I kind of read this as one of a few ways, of course, always, right? Um, now, the queen of wands in reverse could very well be your energy because you got two major arcana here and you got the four of swords. And what's inter interesting is you've got a lot of trees here, guys. Like, you see a lot of dark trees. Um, here, the trees are less um, um, less uh, scary because the light of the lantern is really illuminating them. But in the devil, it looks kind of like bars, right? And I always say when this deck comes out, especially in the winter time, because we're seeing a lot of winter energy here. This is kind of a winter scene, too. Um, maybe you do just kind of feel like the days are kind of short. Um uh, the Guardian of Wands, I always, uh, the Queen of Wands, you know, some, some readers read her as being an Aries woman. It could be an Aries woman or, um, or someone born in April. Um, it doesn't have to be sun sign. It could be fire in other places in the chart, you know, could be a, I usually see the, uh, the Queen of Cups as a Leo, um, but um, the, the, th the big thing about that is that a lot of Leos are kind of born on or around August and, um, we're in the complete opposite sign right now. I did also mention, you know, we have kind of a stellium and, um, Aquarius going on in the sky right now, including Saturn, which is the taskmaster planet. It, um, when that starts making contact to, um, to, uh, you know, Leo planets, you really feel that right? It's, um, uh, Aquarius is the opposite of Leo. So, um, but what I'm kind of getting here is that if this is your energy, um, you are going to be, um, I'm just going to come out and say it, you're going to be in a little bit of a diva mood, right? Um, the Leos can be, um, um, a little bit bossy, right? Um, and it isn't, it isn't because they're trying to be, it's just they, they, they have a commanding presence, right? And, um, and I'll tell you firsthand, I've, uh, you know, I've got a lot of Leo's energy in my life. You know, my, my mom has a Venus in Leo conjunct her Pluto. <laughs> and, you know, my sister has a stellium in late Leo that includes her son and her Mars. So, you know, that's like, you know, you know, that's, I always say it's like, you know, you know how when you light up a grill and, you know, you've sprayed it down with lighter fluid and you put that first match in and it flames up like the freaking, you know, take your eyebrows off. That's a little bit what I'm seeing here, right? Um, so you, um, if this is your energy, I'm just going to caution you that, um, and, and believe me, I've been there. I, I have a Saturn in Leo, so I know what it is. When I, when I get a wild hair, when I get my, my panties in a bunch and that Leo comes out, sometimes I don't even realize how bossy I'm being. And, um, I'll just caution you. Um, I, I'm going to put the Libra hat on for a little, for a minute here. Um, the way that you can tell whether or not you're being condescending, because that's the other thing is that, you know, Leos are the queen, you know, queen bee and, um, whether or not you have Leo in your chart or not, you're going to have that energy. Um, this is either going to be someone you're dealing with, or it's going to be your energy. If it's your energy, let me just tell you right now, you're going to be, you're going to be, especially with the emperor and empress in the mix, you're going to be expecting things to be your way. And you're going to be a pretty damn demanding about it. You're going to be commanding about it. And people chafe at that. 
and you might be kind of you might have your flaming up a little bit more because you do you have some conflicts in the sky you have you have opposite energy in the sky this is not we're not in august right now we're we're in aquarius season so this is not your time to shine so sometimes that makes you spark off more but um, one way, and I, when I get into this mood, and, and believe me, I gotta, you know, uh, what I said, you know, uh, uh, check yourself before you wreck yourself is what I always think, because I have to do it with myself too. Trust me, I, I know how you feel. But um, one way that I can tell is um, listen to yourself. The things, the words that are coming out of your mouth, the words that are coming out of your mouth, the exact inflection, the exact tone, if, if you are saying something to someone else, if you can look yourself in the mirror and say it the same way and the same inflection to yourself and you, you think it's rude or demanding or, you know, uh, tyrannical, don't say it. Either that or take, wait 10 seconds, breathe and try to phrase it a different way. Because I promise you, if you come up to someone and say, why do you do this? If you looked yourself in the mirror or if the person that you were saying that to turned around and said it that the same way to you, you would have their butt on a platter. So don't do that to other people. And that's that's where we're here right now. It, it's 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 the the it's the real diva kind of energy. But um, if this is not you, well, if this is you, the reason that you're in that energy, and believe me, I understand, but again, check yourself before you wreck yourself. You got um, the beautiful thing about the Queen of Wands is that she does, she has so much power in her. And actually, I'm just, I am going to point this out real quick. If, if you watch the walkthrough for this deck, um, the Queen of Wands in this deck is a perfect example. Um, I'm just going to pull it out real quick. Uh, I don't want to make this crazy long, but um, I just want to make the reading quality. Um, but it's such, uh, the beautiful thing about the Queen of Wands is that you have the power to create or you have the power to destroy. And in this, this is a fairy tale deck and I do, I'm going to come out and say it. I think of the story, the Disney movie Moana, but you look at her and you see a volcano in the background, right? And the most beautiful tropical flowers bloom from volcanic ash. But you remember in the story of Moana, remember how Gaia was the evil, was the evil side, right? You, you have the uh, Queen of Wands energy and you can, if, you, if this is someone you're dealing with, try to remember that as well. Um, fire women, fire women, <laughs> you have the ability to create or you have the ability to completely destroy like a volcano. And but when you're in when you're in your rages or when you're in that that destructive fire energy, you don't realize how powerful you are. Again, check yourself before you wreck yourself and you're going to be feeling this towards the middle of the week. Now, one other thing. Let me just see where this moon right now. I have to double check the moon. You might have a lot of squares going on. Um, honestly, I think. I don't know, but something might be kind of chafing at you in the middle of the week. We might be coming up on a new moon. Um, I'll try to check that. But um, the reason, if this is your energy, the reason that you're feeling out of sorts, and remember, you're ready to burn down the forest, you know, be careful, um, is because you got the Wheel of Fortune, and look at that. That looks like a spiraling wheel, right? I do get a sense, if, if you, if Moana is playing on the, on, you know, somewhere, I, I try not to reference mainstream movies, but I'm kind of sensing that, like, the, the Gaia was angry because it didn't have the stone, and the moment it had the stone, it went back to being, you know, it's, it is, it's almost like you're in that dark, raging kind of energy. Um, I get the sense that you feel that way because things are changing, it's almost like things are spiraling. Um, it's quite possible because this person, um, you feel like you're out of control or you feel like you feel like things are just like you're in a whirlwind, right? Um, the thing about the Wheel of Fortune is the Wheel of Fortune is positive, though, because you see the four seasons. You see the four seasons there. Um, and what I kind of think of is if you've ever heard that that old movie, um, not old movie, but that old song, um, uh it's a 60s song, and it's like, um, to everything, turn, 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 there is a season. There's a season for different types of change, and change is uncomfortable. 
Um, it's stati statistically proven that 99% of people dislike change even when it's positive. So I almost feel like you sense like things are changing, but you feel like it's it's just you you feel like it's not it's not within your control or just things are not changing the way that you would like them to change. So it's 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 getting you it's 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 kind of stirring you up. It's stoking a fire in a kind of destructive way. Either that or this in a minute we'll talk about it. This could be someone that you're dealing with. And the root of it is that you feel um again you feel kind of trapped maybe you feel kind of trapped by financial obligations and um and again you know i just get the sense like um, i'm seeing a lot about seasons um maybe you're just feeling a little seasonal affective disorder maybe you're really feeling it at the middle of the week and believe me we got jackets for that club you know the the, the sun sets so early um you know it, it it just feels but what i'm kind of getting is that you just feel like you feel like things are changing um and you you feel kind of trapped like things just feel very dreary um, but what it's telling you is, uh, I think it's really saying you feel you feel out of sorts right now because it's not your season yet. But the the the, the circle is turning, right? It's it's winter time now. It's Aquarius season. It will be summer again. It will be summer. You'll feel like you're back in your element. Just hang in there. But um, the other thing I get is this is the second time we've gotten the Four of Swords. The Four of Swords is like, and it's interesting, I saw a sky that looked like this the other day. I got a picture of it. It was so pretty. But um, I called it a cotton candy sky. I think I posted it on my Instagram. But um, you, it really is, it's not a time to take action, right? It's not a time to take action. Maybe you're feeling kind of blue because the weather, you know, again, you, you kind of feel trapped, Maybe you feel like things are moving without you or or things are, you know, um, I think this is just reminding you that things are happening for you, not to you. But it doesn't feel like that. It just feels like you're in the middle of a whirlwind, right? Things are swirling around. But it it is just reminding you, I think in the middle of the week, the other thing is that I do think in the middle of the week you're going to, um, it might be best that, uh, the other thing that I get is this is kind of a social card and this is kind of an isolation card. If you do feel like you're in a mood, if you're feeling a little, you know, bitchy, I'll just come out and say it, you might want to self-isolate a little bit, you know, there's no harm in that. I've definitely felt that way, you know, especially when you feel like, I'm almost getting a little bit of a vertigo here. Um, the other thing is that you might just feel a little financially trapped, you know, um, now one other way I can read this is it's quite possible that you are dealing with someone who's in this energy. And, um, what, what I'm seeing here is that maybe you feel a little trapped by this energy. Maybe someone, again, this is a real diva kind of energy. This is someone who is like, I'm the queen, you know, you're the peasant, you know, you're going to do this. And maybe this person is not checking their mouth and they're talking down to you, you know, or they're, they're bossing you around. And I really get the sense like Moana, you're just not having it. You're, you're kind of pissed. You feel, you feel a little getting henpecked or browbeaten by this person. Um, I, I do get a sense, like, I'm getting a strong sense that this person does not realize. They, you know, if you've ever seen, um, uh, I'm, I'm hearing Eddie Murphy when he's like, do you hear the words that are coming out of my, it's almost like this person does not hear the words that are coming out of their mouth. And if you turned around and said the same words with the same inflection, they'd be pissed. Uh, it's, I'm getting a strong sense of someone who can dish it but can't take their own crap. But it's almost like you have to deal with it because you have to deal with it. But what I'm sensing here is that the universe is asking you to hang in there. You feel like you're kind of in prison with this. If you, if you have some kind of obligation to this person, maybe you live with them. Maybe it's a, you know, could be a spouse, could be a girlfriend or boyfriend. Um, a man can be in this energy. Oh, men can be divas. And you feel a little trapped by it. But what it is telling you is it's it's saying breathe, kind of go to your corner. Maybe go outside, you know, and enjoy the snow. Look at that sky. You know, do what you can to kind of disconnect. But um, the, the universe is really reminding you that you, this is not forever. And the wheel is turning in your favor. The other thing that I get is that I get the sense that it, it, it won't, I, I almost get like one year. That's what I'm kind of getting. One year from now, things are going to be different. So it's going to be okay. Um, the other thing that I get is, um, <clears throat> you know, if this person is, excuse me, <coughs> 
if this person is really being that that kind of um, tyrannical with you, if they're being condescending or, you know, they're throwing their weight around, you might want to step away, you know, kind of go to your corner, breathe. You are going to feel tied down. You're going to feel like trapped by, but please know that the, the wheel is turning. The wheel is turning. Um, and definitely I get a strong sense, like it's been kind of snowing where I'm at. Maybe go out and then breathe the snow. Have you ever smelled snow? It smells so good. Um, but uh, you also see mountains in the background of this card. But I do think that it's almost like saying go out and look at the sky, if, especially if you're dealing with this. If you're either feeling this way, um, like you feel like the, the world is turning, things are going to get better. It is it is positive change that's coming. It's just really uncomfortable right now. And um, in the middle of the week, all you can do is kind of uh, try to try to take a mental break because there's really nothing that you have to, that you can do about it right now. Um, so try to conserve your energy. And if someone's being being kind of bossy with you, don't engage. You know, um, let let uh, let them keep that funk to themselves, right? Now, by the end of the week, um, I'm kind of getting this is really beautiful energy, guys. Uh, we've got the Elder of Cups, and this is so great. It's a it's a koi fish, and you see he is in the depths of the ocean, and he's coming up to the surface to the cup. You know, and you see more of those mountains too. They're really beautiful. Um, so I do get the sense that um, I kind of read this one of two ways. Uh, the clarifying cards is you got the Five of Cups and you got the Empress. So again, you got the Emperor and the Empress. Um, so one way that I kind of read this is um, it's quite possible that maybe maybe you've kind of had either you've either had a falling out. Um, I'm getting kind of feeling like maybe there was a little bit of a spat or a falling out with your mother or a mother figure. And um, and by the end of the week, there's going to be, um, I get it, the, the Elder of Cups is really being an emotionally mature person. So um, um, maybe if this is the Queen of Wands, if this is your mother or your wife or girlfriend, um, um, or if this is your energy, what you're going to kind of do is that, um, you're going to, um, I'm seeing kind of on different sides of the river here, you know, the, the three broken cups are here and there's two more across the river. Um, what I'm going to, what I'm kind of seeing here is that, um, I kind of see that you're, the, the, the cup at the top there is almost like offering a cup. It is, um. I think there's going to be some kind of an amends here, right? It's quite possible that if this if this is your mother, like if you've had any kind of um, kind of little spats with your mom, either you are going to. You're, I kind of get the sense that you're going to be the bigger person, and um, you're gonna you're gonna keep your emotions in check and try to smooth things over. Um, the other way I read it is that if this was you, if this did cause some kind of fight, or if you've been feeling out of sorts, um, your your um, I get the sense like someone is going to be kind of the the five of cups is a little bit of a pining card, so um, I do kind of sense that. I just need to get a beat on this, guys. I'm sorry. There's there's a lot going on this week. Um, I see you being emotionally mature, like you're handling your own emotions, right? The other thing that I kind of get is that it's quite possible that um, someone, uh, like a really understanding person, that's one other way I read this, is that maybe if you've kind of had a falling out with someone in the middle of the week or you've been feeling really kind of out of sorts, um, by the end of the week you just... The, the Five of Cups can be a little bit of a, you know, woe is me kind of card. It's, you, you might still, you know, uh, be thinking about how you were feeling in the middle of the week. You might just be feeling kind of blue and, you know, um, and you might have someone kind of reach out to you 
and show you a lot of kindness, right? And and I feel like you need that right now. Like you need that right now. Again, I'm I'm seeing, you know, isolation and then the devil, you feel trapped and things are kind of moving or changing without you. Um and we did mention that, you know, uh, the Sunday, you know, a week from tomorrow is, is Valentine's Day. So this would be around the Friday, Saturday before. And if you're in North America, it is a three-day weekend. So maybe someone really does kind of reach out to you and makes you feel better. Um, I get the sense, I do kind of get a, a sense of a heartfelt conversation. Um, either that or maybe you talk to someone who's just, I think you're going to talk to someone that's just really emotionally on the level. Um, someone who's really kind. And I think you need a little kindness right now. The other thing that I'm kind of getting here is that um, if this is your energy, maybe maybe if you did have some kind of falling out with a mom, um, there's going to be kind of a peace offering. Like it's, I do get a sense like almost like you being the bigger person. Um, um, also, if if this is your energy, I get the sense with the Empress that um, you are going to be strong, right? Um, I, I think you're not going to let anything... Um, I think inside that, you know, you might be missing someone, especially as you come up on Valentine's Day, you might be kind of missing someone, um, but you're not going to, you're not going to let it dim your mood. Um, you're going to, it's almost like you're going to be your own cup as well. Um, again, the Elder of Cups is like a, a mastery of your own emotions. Um, the other thing I kind of get here is that you see broken cups on one side of the stream, but then you see two cups remaining and you see the Empress looking over at those two cups. I think, I think you're, you're, you're not going to waste any time. And that's a lot of emotional maturity too. You're not going to waste any time with broken cups. If you're going to, you're going to go for what remains. Um, one other way that I kind of read this too, is that it's quite possible that you might have you, your, your mom or someone who is like a mother figure to you. Um, they might be a little bit upset, you know, they might be a little upset. The, the, um, I am kind of getting like, like, um, I am, yeah, I am getting a little bit of a kind of like a. I'm getting a sense like somebody wants to 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 um, kind of kiss and make up is what I'm kind of getting. Um, the Elder of Cups can also be a very faithful, emotionally faithful man, you know. So um, one way that I can kind of read it is honestly, if maybe maybe you were feeling in a mood in the middle of the week because we do have the Emperor and the Empress, so that can be a married couple, a divine masculine and a divine feminine. Um, so maybe, maybe you got a little moody with your, with your lovey and by the end of the week, he's, he's being the kind one and turning around and, you know, um, reaching out to you, you know, the other thing that I get kind of get here is that, um, you, you might be feeling a little sad inside, but you're not, you're not going to let it keep you down. You're going to continue to. Uh, be nurturing and receptive, and that just shows a lot of emotional maturity. Now, your oracle cards, I feel like, really play into this too, because you got um, you got rabbit spirit, which says now is a lucky time, and I really do think I feel like this really plays into look at look at that imagery. It really looks like the wheel of fortune again. Um, you know. It may not feel like it right now, but I think times you're on the precipice of like a new cycle. I really think so. And what is beautiful here is that it says time for a deep dive. Time for a deep dive. And look, that fish, that king of cups, uh, elder of cups, looks like he is uh, taking a deep dive, right? <laughs> the other thing is that the hermit is really about diving deep, too. It's like really going into, you know, it's thinking about what's happened in the past and, and what you want to go forward, right? Um, you know, um, so one other thing that I kind of get is that... Um, yeah, I think I think I think you're staying on the emotional level. I do think that you have you have some stuff going on. This could be family related. You know, this could be a fa your father and your mother. You know, um, 
possibly a girlfriend or boyfriend. You know, it just seems like, um, you know, it, it does seem like there's some, some spats going on here. Um, but we do have, we have a masculine who's being very emotionally mature. The other thing that I get is that it's possible that they, they might kind of, you know, for Valentine's Day weekend, they might kind of reach out and, you know, offer you a cup. I am kind of getting a sense like maybe, um, you know, um, I am almost getting like a heartfelt conversation though. Um, you know, I, I just, I think at the end of the week, you really, really, you, you need some kindness. Um, one other thing that I kind of get from this is that I think that you, what it's kind of telling you, it's almost like an advice card. Um, I think you're very used to, um, when things get rough, you pull into yourself, you get, you get alone and that is okay. But if you have someone kind of being snippy with you, I think the universe is telling you, you know, if you're hurting inside, you know, you're, you're thinking about a spat that you had with someone, just, um, if, if someone approaches you showing you kindness, you know, like listening to you, um, the other thing I kind of get, um, it's just telling you to receive that. Be open to that, right? Um, you know, if, if, if you're feeling alone, um, the universe sends you people. The universe sends you people. So if, if you're feeling hurt and alone, just kind of send out a prayer, especially right before Valentine's Day. You know, no one wants to feel alone and isolated on Valentine's Day. Um, so it's really telling you, um, open up to that energy. You know, if it's someone that you trust, someone that you know is a kind and empathetic, I do think that someone will be around. The other thing I kind of get is that I feel like they'll they'll let you talk, like kind of talk it out, which is, you know, time for a deep dive. Uh, the other thing about swans is that um, they look so graceful on the surface. They look like they're gliding, but really they're paddling like crazy. So I get a strong sense. Again, I feel like um, there's, there's changes a coming, right? And you look at these flowers, you see how pink they are. Don't they look like the same flowers here, which is the spring? Like this is, um, this is fall, winter, spring, summer. I, I'm getting like, come, come springtime. And, and the same flowers are in the, on, um, on the bunny's ear. There's going to be some changes coming by April. I'm going to go ahead and call it guys. And what's happening is, um, um, you're starting to think ahead and look at all the flowers in the Empress too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's just telling you, these are, these are all symbols of Empress energy. It's, um, you know, d don't, you know, um, try to be in a creative energy, you know, try, try to create, not destroy. Right. Um, and if anybody's coming in and trying to, um, you know, uh, trying to domineer you, you know, and it's making you unhappy, um, you know, you don't, you don't have to put up with that, you know, uh, dig deep and, and realize how you feel. It, it, it doesn't matter what other people want you to do. It's, it's about what you want, right? And now is a lucky time. Now is a lucky time. The wheel is turning and the wheel is turning in your favor. I get a strong sense that springtime is going to be real, a real catalyst time. But, um, but this week, again, you know, if you're feeling out of sorts, by the end of the week, be receptive. I'm getting that strongly. The other thing that I get is that it's quite possible. Yeah. If you are a mom, if you are a mom or um, if you're just a real nurturing person, I think I think before the um, before the Valentine's Day weekend, you're going to have someone reach out to you. Um, either that or you're just going to feel much more level. You're going to feel like, again, um, sometimes sometimes feeling when you feel discontent or when you feel upset or when you feel out of control sometimes those are the best that's like a real catalyst energy for you to dig in deep to see why why you feel that way it, it helps you understand what changes you want to make in your life and i feel like by the end of the week you'll be ready for that but i do th i do sense that someone is gonna gonna do something very kind for you maybe you get a valentine but um this is more with the water, I almost get the sense that um, you're going to have like an emotional, um, someone is going to approach you and you're going to feel a real emotional connection. And I feel like it's a man. I feel like it's a man approaching a woman. Um, but that's a real beautiful energy, guys. Um, but we do, we do have a lot of, we have a, quite a bit of husband, wife here um, or mother, father. 
So, um, you know, it's quite possible that, you know, there's some, some changes coming, you know, in your relationship or in your marriage. But, oh, wow, guys. So all three of these are good weeks. These are good weeks. And again, you know, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not bad energy. It's all, it's very powerful energy. I feel like there's some big changes coming in the new, this new year. And, and um, week by week, we, we see how it's progressing. And that's, that's really amazing. But all right, guys, I thank you so much for joining me. Um, this was a wonderful read as always. Um, please feel free. I'm going to do my best to try to do the um, the Love Deck collection. Um, I'll try to have that posted before Valentine's Day. It's, you know, those those videos do take a little bit of energy to, to film, but we'll do our best. We'll try to get that out. Um, if you are so inclined, I do also post the How to Tarot. Um, so I will be back on Tuesday. And this time we're talking about the Eight of Cups. So I hope that you can join me then. And I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.